My name is Courtney and you can call me Quartz. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going through what it's like to be a background actor on Riverdale? Is that the title? I don't know. I forgot what I was going to title this video. But we're here and we're going to do it. Squeaky squeak squeak chair. Enough of that. I just want to start by saying thank you for arriving at this channel if it's your first time. Please take a second to like and subscribe. I know it's like very early in the relationship for you to be doing that, but I just would appreciate it because I'm a stage five clinger and I kind of, I kind of want to keep this thing going. So you know where the buttons are. Moving on. We're going to start by answering some FAQs about what it's like to be a background actor. Now, keep in mind that I live in Vancouver, Canada. So these are purely based on Vancouver, Canada production rules, but these are, them's the rules. Okay. Basically, these are things that I've accumulated, my little knowledge, my little bit of knowledge that I've accumulated from other background actors and Google. Let's start off with the juicy questions. How much y'all get paid? Great place to start, actually, because it really depends. So in the acting world, there's two things. There's union and there's non-union. In order for you to start out as an actor, you need to start non-union, which means you get paid minimum wage. The minimum wage being... I think it, it really depends on the set. It really depends. I got paid $14.47 for my day on season three of Riverdale, but I got paid $15.87 on my day on The Good Doctor. I don't know if I'm not allowed to disclose this, but it's minimum wage, y'all. But it does depend on the production and it also does depend on your union or non-union status. So if you're non-union, you get the minimum wage. But if you are union, I think you get 20 to 25 an hour. Getting paid on set really does vary though because it depends on how long you work. It depends on your status. If you work longer than eight hours, you get paid overtime. If you work longer than 12 hours, you get paid time and a half, overtime and a half. So it can really add up. But again, it does depend on your status. It depends on the production. It depends on how long your day is. A lot of things come into play and the way that it works is they legally have to fill the union spots before they fill the non-union and sometimes if they can't fill those union spots if there's not enough union actors who are like I don't want to go to Squamish for the day and shoot in the snow they'll call the non-unions and they'll say hey we'll pay you like you're a union actor and we'll give you a union voucher no I don't know I think the voucher is just they just pay you as a union actor. Next, you might want to know, well, how long do I work for? Again, depends, really depends on the day, depends on the production, depends on what they need to get done, depends on how long they need the extras for, <sighs> just depends. But again, a minimum of four hours is what you'll get paid for. So at the end of the day, if you're sent home after two hours, it's a win because you got paid for four. But if you have to work 12 hours, always expect to work for 12 hours, by the way. If I'm called for seven, I'm expecting to leave at seven just every time. That way, you don't have to worry about how long you're going to be there for. You just know it's going to be 12 hours at least. So how do you get into the union? Now, there's a few ways to do it. You can collect vouchers like I was trying to do. Collect 15 of these bad boys. Here she goes again. Collect 15 of those and that equals one credit. So once you have that one credit, you can apply as an apprentice to the union. And when you're an apprentice to the union, it's kind of just like skipping a step. You get that one credit, but you need three credits to enter the union in BC. You need three credits. So once you have that apprenticeship, one credit value, all you have to do is keep working and eventually you'll either get upgraded on set or if you're a working actor, you'll book a speaking role on either a, a union commercial or a TV show or a movie, if you're really lucky. <laughs> those, those vouchers equal days of work. So those are proof that you've worked certain days and they're also how you get paid at the end of the day. So you sign in, you get that sheet. Come back here. You sign in at the, at the day that you fill in all your stuff. I don't know if I'm supposed to be showing this. I'm just gonna read it to you. So it says non-union extra voucher. So that's my voucher. Performer's name, your agency if applicable, and your address so that they can ship your paycheck to you. Very important. Money, 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 signature, 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 signature. Lots of signatures. 
Proof of work, proof of payment, very important. So you need to be able to scan these in and send them to the union when you want to apply as an apprentice. Otherwise, you can land a speaking role to get another credit or you can be upgraded on set. To get upgraded on set, you have to basically be very, very lucky and everyone will hate you but be happy for you at the same time. It's when the director or the producer or someone of power says, hey, we need something to bring the scene to life. Why don't we have that extra bump into our lead actor? That is considered an interaction with the lead cast, which means they have to upgrade you and give you that credit and also pay you, I'm pretty sure, as a union actor for that day. It's good. You make a little extra money and you get your credits. Then once you've collected three, um, you're able to apply as a union member and get union pay and also reap the benefits of healthcare and work benefits, uh, pension, like all those important things, all of those important adulting things. So do you go through hair, makeup, wardrobe? Yes and no. So as an extra, regardless of your union or non-union status, you are required to bring your own wardrobe. There are special occasions where they might ask you your sizing um, for certain things, like if you're a cheerleader in the background or a football player in the background, like whatever. They might ask you sizing for that and they'll have um, wardrobe ready for you. But for the most part, expect to bring your own wardrobe, expect to roll up on set with a whole duffel bag full of crap because they're gonna wanna go through that and see all of your options. Some days they'll be shooting different days, but they'll recycle the same extras in different outfits to, to get the shots that they need. Sometimes they just need you in one outfit. So you need to make sure that you bring enough clothes to set. Logos, patterns, stripes, polka dots, vetoed, none, no, we don't want that. You can't rock your Ariana Grande t-shirt. No one wants to see that. They wanna see Ariana Grande, so. As for hair and makeup, I know it seems like very glamorous. I know you're like, oh, I just wanna get there and have someone curl my hair and give me a nice lipstick. But it, it's, it doesn't really happen that way. The hair and makeup for background, they just wanna like get you in and get you out. Most of the time I sit down in the makeup chair and they look at me and they're like, do you have lipstick? And I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, you're good. Get out of here, get out. What does Lizzo say? Shampoo press, get you right on my hair. But they don't wanna shampoo your hair. They don't wanna have to do anything. So come to set clean and ready to go. <laughs> Some fun questions. What do I do with my hands? I don't I don't know. Like if you're like me and you're just constantly like talking with your hands, it's gonna be very hard to contain that. Lucky for us, we have a props department. I'm usually playing like a teenager anyway, so they give me a book or a binder or a backpack to carry. Props will hook you up, you won't have to worry about that. <laughs> do you notice more background after being one? Absolutely. One million percent, because you've kind of seen the ins and outs of what a set looks like and how it works. So you're definitely watching those background actors. Like I find myself, if I, if it's a show that I've seen before, I'm definitely like watching background, like what is going on? And if you haven't, don't do it now, but after look up like background actor fails or something on YouTube, because it's so funny. What is the best thing about being background? The best thing about being background is the snacks, crafty all day, every day. Nothing got me out of bed faster than the thought of a hot coffee just being ready for me when I got to set, like just pull up to the crafty table and coffee, donuts, bagel, everything, like whatever you want. Um, if it's a really early day, they do hot breakfast. So like if you're there at the beginning of the day, they have to serve you breakfast. So you'll get like eggs and bacon and toast and whatever your heart desires. And then you get another meal at lunch. We're out here for the free food. This is a question that I asked myself a lot before I actually did any background work. Should I be a background actor if I wanna be a real actor? So if your goal is to do principal work, 100% focus on your principal work. However, if you are unrepresented, you don't have an agent, but you wanna be a principal actor, you wanna land those lead roles, I would encourage you 100% to do background work. It gives you a taste of how a real production runs. It gives you a taste of what to expect when you do land that role and get on set. And it also teaches you set etiquette. You'll learn so quickly of what not to do. It's gonna be, it'll just level you up so that when the day comes that you are the lead, you are just super prepared. Being a background actor, you're just a human prop essentially. So it's very grounding to know what it's like to experience that so that when you do land the lead role, you're like, 
not a complete dick to people. And I have seen it on an occasion or two of lead actors just kind of snubbing the extras and it's like, you don't have to be like that. Like there's, there's no reason for that. And I think that working as an extra might kind of ground you. So definitely keep that in mind. Some people will say though, that if you work as a background actor, casting will recognize you and then not cast you as the lead role, which I just don't see happening because the castings are completely different. There's background casting and then there's principal casting. So unless those two are like meeting up for coffee and like talking shit about you, it's very unlikely to happen. All in all though, working as a background actor is a great way to get set experience and learn your set etiquette. So do it, do it, do it. If you are unrepresented, do it, do it, do it. If you have an agent, don't. <laughs> you need to be able to give your time to your agent and your auditions and you need to know where your priorities are at. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, but don't also forget about those other eggs, if you know what I mean. Now, do I need an agent to do background? Yes and no. It's very convenient to start out with an agent because they pretty much just hand you the work on the days that they need you. But you do have to split 10 to 15% of your paycheck with them at the end of the day. It can kind of add up, especially if you've worked a couple of really long days and you've made a little bit more money than you normally would. I know in Vancouver, a lot of extras are turning to the actual casting website. So if you're in Vancouver, you can go to bcfcasting.com and create a profile and sign up and basically just wait to be requested for a background because that's the casting website. They're doing the casting. They don't need to go through your agent and be like, do you have anyone who fits the description? They just look and they see you and they're like, perfect. Quartz is in. You want to make as much money as you can. Now that we have the questions out of the way, let's go through a day in the life of a background actor as illustrated by me, Courtney. Call me Courts. Let's go. Okay, so here we are. We made it to set. You're 15 to 20 minutes early because you are punctual. You got your wardrobe. You're all prepared. You're going to go to the sign-in lady. She's going to give you your voucher. She's very cranky because it's first thing in the morning and she's been there probably an hour longer than you. She's going to give you your voucher to fill in all of the adequate information that we went through earlier. You're going to claim your spot for the day. You're going to realize that you forgot a pen. This happens every single time. You're going to borrow a pen. It'll be great. Someone else is always more prepared than you are. <laughs> Once you're done filling in all that information, you're going to take the sign-in sheet slash voucher right back to her. She's going to take it. She's going to say thank you, and she's going to put a pile of 200 other vouchers just like that. Then she's going to tell you to go away. She has a very busy day. You're going to take your wardrobe. You're going to go to where? Wardrobe. That's right. You're going to get there and you're going to say, hey, and they're going to approve what you've got on and you're going to be great. You're going to go to hair and makeup. Makeup's going to look at you and tell you you probably just need lipstick. Yes, this applies to everyone. You're going to be like, okay, cool, and get out of there. Then you're going to be wait to be calling to set. You're called to set. It's time to go. You're ready. And what are you going to do? Walk back and forth for probably 12 hours. If you don't know what to do with your hands, what do we do? Put them in our pockets. All good. Walk back and forth. The day is just going to fly by. You're going to be so excited. It's finally done. You did your first day as an extra. You're going to go back to the sign-in lady. There's usually a huge line. And you're going to get her to sign you out for the day and fill in her half of the information. She gives you an aggressive signature and tells you to get out of her face. There is 200 people waiting behind you and she wants to go home too. Then you get home and you finished your first day on set. You're so excited. What are you gonna do with that voucher? You're gonna take it very gently, put it in your snazzy jazzy organizational folder that you should definitely have because if you're like me, you lose paper and pens and things very easily. I haven't seen chapstick since 2007. So that is what a day looks like as a background actor. You get in, you get out. You're very respectful, you eat the food. Don't forget to eat the food. All right, thank you guys for checking this video out. It is something that people were keen to see and I don't think it is as exciting as people expected, but there you have it. Yeah, I feel like I answered some pretty solid questions. I hope this video helps people. I hope that it gets you on your first day on set. That would be awesome. And to those of you who are hoping this would be like me spilling the tea on um, the cast of Riverdale, I'm very sorry, but um, it just, it doesn't happen. <laughs> There's no tea to be spilled. Anyways, thanks for checking this video out, and uh, I'll see you guys on hump day. Bye!